So cloud computing is a really interesting topic because it's, uh, my friends don't like me to say it this way, but it's kind of like time sharing warmed over or time sharing on steroids because it's shared assets used by a number of people remotely and that's what the cloud is. That's not what, that's not only what the cloud is, but it has a lot of those characteristics. The good part is that it's dynamic sharing of uh, large scale resources and that allows for efficiencies that you don't normally get uh, when you have individual machines that are only used 10 or 15 percent of the time. The second thing that you get out of cloud computing is the ability to rapidly expand the total computational footprint against a particular problem, whereas you don't get that with your personal machines, laptops, and PDAs. Uh, the uh, hard part about uh, cloud computing is, first of all, you're sharing resources with other people. That was true with time sharing. You always worry whether your information is protected from everybody else or not. Uh, if all of your information is uh, held in that machine or in that cloud, you always worry, that will, it, will it be preserved? Will it, will it be lost? Not, not uh, just will someone else get access to it inappropriately, but will it, it will be there when I need it. The second uh, or third issue with clouds is that right now, the people who build cloud-based computing systems like Google and IBM and Amazon and Microsoft uh, don't build them the same way and they don't have all the same functionality. On the other hand, I expect the users of cloud-based services to begin to want to have the flexibility to move data from one cloud to another, maybe engage more than one cloud at the same time, maybe get two clouds or three clouds to do something and then collaborate with each other in order to complete a particular computation or a particular function. So we now need to worry about how clouds will communicate with each other. That's the inter-cloud problem, and in some ways we're faced you know, now in 2010 with the same problem we had in 1973 when Bob Kahn and I were trying to figure out how do we get internet, how do we get nets to talk to each other, how do we get clouds to talk to each other. So I'm quite interested in the technical side of this. Uh, one of the things which has occurred to me is that one of the solutions that we invented in the ARPANET days, the predecessor to internet, involved something called the network virtual terminal. This was a, a concept uh, of a device that didn't exist. The idea was that if all the hosts on the ARPANET could serve the terminals that were physically connected to them and this fictitious network virtual terminal, then if everyone could present themselves as if they were a virtual terminal, every machine on the ARPANET could serve to support that one additional kind of terminal. So we implemented this <coughs> protocol called Telnet, which had this network virtual terminal concept in it. And the reason I go into this detail is that I'm thinking about cloud interactions, thinking we need a network virtual cloud, the definition of a virtual cloud, which we will all present as a facade. It doesn't represent necessarily every functionality that we can do with a particular cloud, but it would allow inter-cloud interactions to the extent that they have common uh, capabilities, common representations of data and the like. So cloud computing is actually a very interesting, very a uh, facile concept, one which uh, we've implemented at Google and replicated for resilience and redundancy. So I'm pretty convinced that it's here to stay. We have lots of interesting problems still ahead of us as we get these things to interact with each other. <laughs>